Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, it's Dale Beaumont and welcome to Design My Website, a brand new series that goes through everything you need to know about how to plan and then build a great website for your small business. In this episode, we're going to talk about 15 things you need to know before building your website. And we're going to be chatting to two very successful website builders and developers, guys that have built over 4,000 websites uh, before. And we're going to be talking about uh, 15 things. There's a checklist that we've prepared about what people need to, to get ready and get prepared so that way you can get your website built in the most uh, time efficient way possible. And hopefully uh, by being uh, proactive, you can also save money at the same time as well. All right, so let's get into it. Just remind us who you guys are and a bit about uh, you know, what you do in terms of your company. Yep. Yep. All right. So hi, um, my name's Tamsin uh, Rothschild. Um, yes. I have been working at Magic Dust for seven and a half years mm -hmm. now. The company was actually started 10 years ago by my sister Bianca and her business partner Ian Mills. Um, yeah, and we've been, we've been um, rocking on for 10 years, <laughs> loving, loving building websites. It's always interesting and always exciting because it, it changes so much. When we started 10 years ago, we were actually one of the first companies that um, um, introduced CMS content managed system websites, which basically allowed, for the first time, was allowing users to actually administer and add the content to the websites themselves. I mean, now it's really commonplace, but, but back then, 10 years ago, it really wasn't. And, and I think that the turning point was it turned websites from thousands of dollars to, I mean, we were selling our first websites for three, four hundred dollars back then. Yeah. Okay, great. We've come a long way, yeah. And, and the amount of websites you've built now, I think it's about 4,000 yeah, or so, so websites. Yeah, so we've built over 4,000 websites. Uh, we currently have 3,000 active clients uh, and 20 staff. Okay, great. So uh, this episode is all about how to um, get everything ready to then get your website uh, built. Uh, in previous episodes, we have spoken about uh, how to choose a great website developer and also uh, should you fix your existing website or do you need a new one? So that has already been covered. So we've made a decision uh, to get a new website. Uh, we're now go we've found a website developer or a website company that we're excited to work with. Um, now we're going to go through all the steps. So what have we prepared? We've got a checklist, right? And there's 50 things how did we come up with this with uh, with this list um, we basically came up with the list of the, the most common things that you need to, that to plan out to get ready um, it's it's it, there's, there's a lot of elements to uh, to a website project people often underestimate how much work it is uh, so we've kind of put together the checklist of what we feel is the most important things uh, to prepare and we've grouped some of them together we could have done a hundred things that you need to do to build a website yeah. but uh, we've grouped the, the most important uh, ones uh, together uh, so uh, but the other thing as well we spoke about before you should be getting a checklist of sorts from your website developer as well so we're kind of being proactive here by giving listeners uh, the, the list however a good website development company should be saying hey here's what I need yeah and they should be part of this process there's some of these steps that uh, that you're not necessarily going to know all of the answers and if, and if you're working if you've engaged a web development company they should be helping you with some of these steps Okay, so let's get into it right now. The first one is deciding on the target market for the website. Now, it seems like an obvious one, yeah. but I'm guessing you guys speak to hundreds of people every single month. How many people actually know this and are clear on it, or would you say a lot of people are very vague? There, 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 is a, there is a lot of businesses that aren't quite sure who their target market is. Um, so it's, and it's, so it's, a, it's a more common question than, than, than what you would think. Um, so essentially, before you, you embark on building the website, you need to know who you're building it for. Um, so the people, that, the people that you want to come to the website and the kind of things you want to make sure that the content that you're delivering is, is going to be relevant to them. So you need to think about the things that motiv would motivate them to use your service, their passion points and also the things that, the, the, you know, that their pain points of the reason why they would want to buy your service. So something that, a, a problem that you, that you solve. So I think that it's almost, it's, it's, it sounds like a really basic step, but it's a really, a really important first step is to work out who it is that you're building. Because this one thing may defect 
50 other decisions that you're going to make in the future, right? Yeah, ex exactly. And um, help me, Tamsin, in terms of going, um, it's more than just who, what the age is and if it's male or female, um, you know, it really goes a bit deeper. You were talking before about what are their pain points and problems. Just want to elaborate on that. How do we actually, what are we looking for when it comes to this target market? So it's, it's really understanding the psychology of the person that you're aiming your business towards. Mm -hmm. So we, we know what the pain point is with people that are building new websites. So when we talk about, you know, we're reliable, we're, um, you know, we have experience, we, you know, because we know we've built 3,000 websites, that's what we want to portray because that's what, that's what we want to sell. So that's, having that in the fore of our mind, it really does help us make the decisions when it comes to all of the decisions because there is going to be a lot of decisions as you walk through the web process and really understanding who the target market is so it becomes not about what I like but what is going to work and what is going to convert and what is going to attract people. So you know, if I was one of your clients, what would, would you recommend, uh, what would you like from me? Would you like like half a page or a full page or just like you know, for me writing down this is who my uh, target market is, this is maybe some of the, the kind of uh, demographics but also psychographics, what they actually think, what are their fear, fears, problems, frustrations, what are they not getting in other uh, providers? Is that what you want? Yeah, we, we, have a, we have a brief which we get people to fill out, which we get we uh, collect information about the target market and we, 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 we get a little bit of a, a picture for what they are, um, but also what the, your point of difference is in the, in the market. It's like, how do you solve your, 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 your client's problems? What makes you different than your competitors? Um, we also gather information on the competitors in the market to have a look at the things that they do well and also what they, uh, you know, where, where there's opportunities as well. Okay, so number one was getting uh, really clear on the, the target market and uh, making sure that's, that's ready before you then start building. All right. Number two is register your domain name. So do you want to talk a bit about that? And uh, some people would already have a domain name, right? And other people are going to be setting up one from scratch. But you need to have that ready. That's not really the responsibility of your website developer, or is it? Um, you don't. You don't need to. Um, you know, m most people these days, if they, you know, most people know that they need to have a domain name, which is the name of their website. But um, most of our clients. Uh, our existing clients obviously all have their own domain names, but a lot of our clients we are registering the domain names for them, um, so that you know that would not you know that's not a problem. You know we can do that. Um, the question is really what should I register? You know what should my domain name be? Um, and you know should I get a .com? Should I get a .com.au? Should I you know whatever country you're in? Should I get a .com.uk? Um, that, you know, what should you get? My recommendation would be probably get as many as you can. Um, you know, if you are, um, if you are, you know, if, you, if your uh, target market is within your country, like if it's w within Australia, then you, there is a tendency that people feel more safe going to a .com.au, but less and less I think that's, that's happening. Um, but you also do want to secure the .com. Um, because you don't want a competitor buying that domain and setting up a business there. And obviously, if you are looking to um, expand to globally. globally, you definitely want to have the .com. Yeah. Okay, so in most cases, you know, you you will be registering yourself as the business owner, but you might have a website developer yeah. that actually or company that will say where they can do it for you. Yeah. But it's important that you own the domain name, right, yeah. um, as the yeah, business definitely. owner. I would generally say as a recommendation, once you've decided on a business name, I'd be registering the domain straight away. Okay. Yeah. And Great. if you're not sure what to register, I would actually get advice on that because we do have people that have these really, really, really long domain names because they have some misperception that that's going to help with their SEO or I can't, you know, abbreviate because that's who I am. But, you know, practically speaking, if people are trying to type in, you know, um, Darwin, homestays, backpackers, um, outback.com.au, you know, it's going to be hard for them to actually find find your website. Okay, yeah. great. Let's go into the next one. And the next one is decide on your hosting strategy. So what does that what does that mean? It's, uh, if you're building a website for the first time, what is hosting and why do you need a strategy around it? Yeah. So hosting every website needs to be hosted somewhere. So there's four main components with a website. Um, a domain name, which is the name of your website, the website itself, the where it's hosted and also email hosting. So that would be to have your, your um, a professional business um, address like Tamsin at magicdust.com.au. So those are the four components that you, you want to be thinking about. Mo some de web development companies, they will handle all of those for you. And if you aren't sure about hosting, um, you know, as a, as a startup business or a, a small business, startup small business, 
you probably want to be looking for a website company that's going to handle a lot of those elements for you because hosting can if you if you if you've got to also engage a hosting company as well as a web development company it's a whole it's a whole nother thing which is which is fine to do but if you can find a company that will do it all for you it's a good idea and so the website developers can set that all up uh, for you but uh, there is obviously fees involved in that and that's where you either pay the hosting company directly or you pay your developer who then mm -hmm. basically covers that for you is yeah. that how it works yeah. yeah and in terms of hosting as a quick rule of thumb if you want to rank well within your country should you be hosting your website on local servers that are in your country uh, or should you be hosting them in America where it's perhaps cheaper yeah. Yeah. Google tends to uh, give preference to local hosting um, so, so uh, generally speaking, I'd advise to get a local host. So if you have a local business and you want to rank well within, say, the UK, you should be hosting your websites yeah. within the UK? Yeah. yeah Same with right. Australia or South Africa yeah. or any other country? If you're an international business, obviously, it's, it's less important because you're, you're trying to attract traffic from all over the world. But if it's country-specific, it's, uh, it's, it's favourable to have. It's not the only factor, but it's favourable to have it, uh, hosting in that country. So you should talk to your website developer about this. All right, let's get on there to... Is, there is one thing yep. that I just want to add, which is really, really important. And it's sort of, it's like the invisible piece in the middle, which is the web developer builds the website and some web development companies will wash their hands of it and say, I'm done here. And then the hosting company um, takes over. Normally hosting companies, big hosting companies are a little um, removed from the process. They don't really care about what's going on inside your website. They, they'll make sure your website is, um, is up online. Um, at, you know, 24-7, that's great. You know, speed is something you want to think about. You know, if you are in a shared environment, you don't want to just be a number. You want to make sure that they are um, responsive to you as well. But in between that, there is, there is the security um, and the, the care for your website. Like, who is running the updates? Who's running, you know, the plugin updates, the software updates, backups, um, those types of things, because... Host, your hosting company should be running the backups, but they probably aren't running the plugin. So that, that responsibility needs to go to someone. And if it, most cases it goes to the small business owner, they don't even know that they're supposed to be doing that. Mm. And there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, sad stories where people have lost their website and the hosting company don't have a, a backup of it, or their website's hacked because they haven't been maintained. So you really want to make sure and that And the developer said, the developer says, I need my bit, that's your responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's kind of the, the piece that people don't think about. I mean, we offer, that's part of what we do. We offer a managed service. Some people don't even know why and what until they need it. And mm. then, you know, then they're grateful when, you know, when something does happen and we, we do have a good backup. But okay. it is something to think about, yeah, and just to be aware of. Great. We're going to go through one more very quick one and then we'll take a break. Uh, decide on your website building platform. So what do we mean by that? So we mean uh, the, the engine that's going to be driving the site. So uh, is it going to be a WordPress site? Uh, you know, WordPress is, a, is, a, is an example. Joomla is an example. Drupal is an example. This decision you shouldn't be necessarily making just on your own. You should be making that in conjunction with the, uh, with the web development company. And it should really be about what functionality you need. Um, and obviously, we've discussed the import, like the importance of open source. So the open source platforms are generally, generally are better for small to medium business. Fantastic, great. We're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to continue to work through our list uh, around uh, things you need to get ready before you start building a website. Hope you're taking notes. Keep watching. Welcome back to Design My Website. Uh, we're talking all about. Uh, how to actually get ready to start building your website. We're going through a 15 point checklist. Let's quickly summarize right now what we have covered to date. All right, first one is you want to decide on the target market for your website, really important. We've discussed that. Next is registering your all important domain name and getting that done. Then what you want to do is decide on your hosting strategy. Where is your website going to be hosted and whose responsibility is it going to be? To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.